welcome back to Off the Beaten Path Maps and Outdoor Tips. One thing we get when we talk to people about topographic maps is some people have the ability to read them and some don't, or they haven't ever been shown how. And sometimes it scares them, it looks like a lot of information, and they have a hard time with it so they, they, they shy away from it. So what I'd like to do today is just show you an example of how to look at a topographic map sort of to identify some of the map symbols, terrain features, what the colors are, what they mean, and how you can take that and try to turn it into sort of a three-dimensional picture in your mind so that you can pick out the mountaintops, the drainages, and that kind of thing. And I've got some illustrations that I can show you that maybe help you see that. So let's get started. Okay, so we want to learn how to read a topo map. Now when you look at a topo map here, it probably gets confusing because there's a bunch of contour lines that's what all these lines are running around here you just got a bunch of information on here and if you don't know what it is it can get very confusing so let's start out with some basic stuff first off we need to identify some topographic symbols now what is a symbol? We, a symbol we gotta know what the colors represent and what symbols are so first off what do you think right here there's some black lines what do you think those represent on this particular map it's telling you that it's a county line right there black also can represent a road this here is red it's a highway which is a major highway through this area but black is generally some kind of man-made thing or some designated boundary now blue, I'm sure you already know, represents water or a drainage. Just because there's a blue line in it or something doesn't mean that there's actually water there. It just represents a drainage. Now brown are relief features. Relief features are your contour lines. You've got, generally there will be a darker line that represents your main contour line and generally they'll go in a 200 foot interval on your seven and a half minute quads I believe that's what it is so you'll have a, a really dark contour line here say that's 200 feet and then you have a bunch of uh, several little brown lines that aren't quite as dark and then another dark line that means between this one and that one there's 200 feet each one of those little lines in the middle represent say 40 feet so that gives you, the brown gives you your relief features. Now of course green, uh, there's some green here, gives you some vegetation colors. It says there's vegetation there. And like I said, red can be your major roads, uh, metropolitan areas, and that kind of thing. Now we want to look at terrain features, because that's another important part of reading a map. As the illustration shows, there's a way you can do this pretty easily. If you make a fist, you can look at your knuckles. And when you're looking at your knuckles, you see the point of your knuckle. Those are your heel tops. In between each of those knuckles is a valley. Or saddles, I mean. And then if you go off, say, your little finger like it's showing here, it would be um, a cliff. Draws and draws are the things running down between your fingers you know running down between your fingers and then you've got your spurs or ridge spurs coming off this way on your fingers it also shows you can take your hand and cup it like that like it's showing in the illustration and it's showing you how you can identify this as a valley or a depression so how does that apply well you take that and there's a couple things you need to look at first off in a map there's going to be little circles at the top, I mean the heel top. As the circles get bigger going down, that means you're going down in elevation from the heel top. If you've got a bunch of little hill tops in a row, then you've got a ridge. If you've got a couple of hill tops and then a low area in between, it could be a saddle, it can be a valley, depending on the depth of it, what it is. So they it's just in a nutshell what it what the topographic features are 
Looking at this particular map, let's just identify a few of these. If we look here by Window Mountain, those little tiny circles right there indicate that that's a hilltop. You've got three little circles in a line there, which indicates that that's a ridge. It's a small ridge, but it's a ridge. You've got a hilltop here, and you've got a hilltop that's a little higher over there. And you've got a low area in between them, which represents the saddle. Now, the blue line is running here, which represents that that's probably water, which could be coming through a, down a draw. Now, the thing to just keep straight, water runs downhill, as we all know. So the line starts here and ties into another line here. Where it starts is the high point, where it ends is the low point. So this is the high point, plus you've got those hilltops right there, several circles running in a line. So you've got a ridge line and a hilltop, and it starts here and it runs down. And if you look at the contour lines at the bottom, of that, underneath that blue line, the contours are making a symbol pointing up that hill. If you look right here, if you can see that, it's pointing up. See how the contour line goes up, makes a point, and then comes back down. And that's what the contours will do when they're going up a draw. If they're going down a ridge, which is right here, you'll see here's the hilltop, and the contour lines start pointing away from the hilltop and going down. See, they come out here, contour comes around, goes back this way. So they're pointing down, and you got water in the bottom. You got the top is the this is the hill, the water's in the bottom, so they're pointing down. That could be a ridge or a spur, depending on how you want to do it, how you want to say it. But that's a ridge or a spur, and then where it's pointing up, right next to it, is a draw, because it's going from low to high pointing. This is going from high to low pointing. Okay, so now we're picturing the map on top of all that hill, those different elevations that we saw there. And here is Window Mountain. There's that one ridge line going down that direction. Here's the ridge line coming off there that we showed on the other one. The draw or drainage coming down into the valley area where the Animus River is. And we're a little bit off of the, let me scoot it over here a little bit. So here is the Animus River down in the bottom. Here's the draw or drainage coming down with the needle crick in it. And here's uh, Wind, Windham Mountain right in here with those ridge lines that we were looking at. So this is what you want to picture in your mind using a topographic map. You've got the contour lines that illustrate whatever on the map it tells you. It could be 40 feet apart. You've got the different colors, so you know that the brown lines are contour lines. It's going to give you your elevation. You know that the black lines are some kind of man-made boundary or man-made road or something like that. And you've got the blue lines which indicate water or a drainage. So in a nutshell, that sort of gives you a good idea of how to look at a topographic map. Now let's I'm going to zoom out here just a little bit to show you this entire area. So as you're looking at that map that we originally looked at, and you look over the entire area, as you're looking at those contour lines, and if you spend time doing it, you'll get your mind so that you can look at it and you can see, okay, that's a hilltop, that's a drainage, that's a draw, this is a valley, this is where the river is, here's the highway, so on and so forth. You can do all that using just the map. So if I bring the map back in of that exact area, that's what it looks like. Now for most people, you know, the shaded relief or the, the three-dimensional or whatever that is, you know, that has the mountains thin, that is easier. For some of us that have used topographic maps like this all the time, sometimes that shaded relief throws me off and I like just looking at my map. But anyway, so this gives you an idea. If you go buy a map, seven and a half minute quad, 
these are some of the things you need to look at. That's how you try to picture it in your mind. And if you get it pictured in your mind, it will draw a picture for you and show you what the mountain ranges are, what the valleys are, and everything about it. That's it on this, on this review. We appreciate you watching, and we hope that you found it very interesting and, uh, and useful. Please join us again next time when we have another review or some outdoor tips. Thanks again.